Good evening. I want to apologize for the slight delay in the uh, beginning of the broadcast. There was a little technical difficulty, and um, but we're here now. Uh, immortality is the extension of mortality, right? Mortality means death, the end, right? In order for there to be a death, there has to be a birth. In order for there to be an ending, there has to be a beginning. Immortals have no beginning or ending. Right? Those who are extended in their memory, those who are extended into the future, those who have the ability to further their thoughts and evolve their way of thinking outside the box. And I'm not talking about the... Uh, Illusions of being outside the box Because a lot of people have illusions of grandeur About being outside the box Of the limited thoughts And perceptions in this society A lot of our people think because They got degrees and philosophy They read these philosophy books They study spirituality Or they talk spiritual A lot of spiritual jargon And you know, and uh, not being religious And all this other stuff They think that they're out of the box And therefore they are in line to become immortal or they are connected to an immortal source when in actuality they are terrestrial earthbound people the most people who try to be so called spiritual and celestial and all this other stuff who try so hard talking about their spiritual these are the most earthbound people you ever want to see the most terrestrial people the people who are linked into this world the people that are linked in and concerned with the things of this world they're not concerned with the things of the future the next world See, because I made a statement that the more evolved your thoughts are, the closer you start to move toward immortality. Why did I say that? I said that because in the future, a certain group of people will be able to evade death. Evade death. They will not have a physical death. They will find the cure for death. Their physical body will continue. It will extend. Right? That's real. There will be no caskets, no funerals, no laying down, no stopping in the heart, no stopping in the blood and things. They will continue. Because as you go further out, as we go further out in that mindset, as we go further into the dimensions, as we're going further in time to higher dimensions, higher definition, we are going to discover the cure for death. The elite will. The people who can't fathom this, they will die. It's not for them to pick up. It's not for them to tune in on that frequency. Certain people, they already have it in their DNA. Certain ones of you, though you will appear to die a physical death, you will lay uh, uh, and your heart will appear to stop. You will travel in your bloodline into the future. Your soul your solar force, your solar energy will continue because the limitation was on your body. And it will receive a new body. It will seek out a new shell to inhabit, to continue forward in the future. Right? This is immortality. Energy cannot be destroyed. It cannot be uh, uh, snuffed out. It will continue. It will always continue in certain forms. Even when people talk about the sun eventually dwarfing out and, you know, just not existing anymore. Sun will always exist. Solar energy, power will always exist. Light will always exist in the darkness. Without light, there is no purpose for darkness. And without light, that is what carries life, immortal life, eternal life. As long as there's light, there's Life, immortal life. Same way they say when they go to a planet, they say as long as they find water, they say there's signs of life. There's signs of single-celled amoebas and uh, uh, um, and uh, uh, life forms in the water. Wherever there's water, there's life. Wherever there is water, there is mortal life, terrestrial life, meaning life on that terrain. But where there is light, in the constant universe, the constant expanding universe, there is immortal life. There is immortal life. Wherever the light is expanding, 
That is thought. That is intelligence. That is life, immortal life, life that will continue. Right? So we're going to get into that tonight. I am the intellectual Newman Minkares, and this is State of Mintel Radio. And tonight, the real, the real immortal celestial beings, right? the true and living, because these are people. A lot of you are linked to their bloodline. Right? A lot of you are linked to the bloodline of the immortals. A lot of you will make it in that line of becoming immortals. A lot of you, it's already in your DNA to become immortals, to go from mortal to immortal, to go from a bloodline of people who are destined to die, people who were only going to think to a certain level to where they didn't serve any purpose in the future. So that part of the bloodline died out. But those of you who are thinking on a higher level, beyond spirituality, beyond metaphysics, beyond all these established uh, limited perceptions of man, those of you who have thinking beyond that, who opened your minds up to receive on a higher level, you will be opening your mind to intellect. Right? This is the knowledge of immortality, the beginning. Those of you who have taken a step in reception and high frequency, high definition, you will begin to have realizations, reality checks about immortality. The more you're able to see the possibility of images that are being entered into your head, being sent to you for your imagination, for these images to open up in your mind, in your brain so that you can actually fathom these things. You can actually fathom immortality, living forever, because this is already in your DNA. You already are those descendants, are part of that bloodline descendancy of those God beings, those Amen beings, who are the immortals, the undead. This is what it truly means when it talks about the undead, right? Meaning that they are always living. It's not some simple-minded nonsense about some damn vampires and some madness, you know, that that, uh, mankind promotes about the undead. It's not some zombies and whatnot, no. No, the zombies would represent your walking dead. Those would be your people who are in a state of ignorance. That would be your zombies, you know. They're your walking dead. Your undead would be your immortals, right, your celestial beings, the ones who are not of this terrain, who are walking on this terrain, who were born on this terrain but are not of this terrain. What differentiates you from those who are born on this terrain is that you do not, as an immortal, You do not marry yourself to any nationality that is based in the limited perception of man's mindset. You don't marry yourself onto titles such as African, uh, European, Egyptian, Nubian. I mean, we use those terminologies because I was trying to explain it, but we we would call these things, but these are not us because these are terrestrial or mortal uh, mortal, uh, identities. Right? The true immortal is a mentalist the true immortals the true children the true descendants of the almond beings are the receivers of their thoughts the true immortals we're being given a path to walk out of mortality into immortality because we are useful we are useful we are useful to the agenda of these Amen beings, these Omni beings. Look at the word Amen, Omni. It's the same thing, continuous, eternal, immortal beings, never ending. In a world where there is no time, they exist in a world where there are no time frames, no dimensions, no solar systems to dictate time, no start, no go, no end. These would be your immortals, your God race, the beings that created time, told man, you know, according to the Bible, told man that his time would be 120. Though our people have been cut down in lifespan, and we've been killing our time span off, and we've been becoming more and more mortal, meaning closer to death. When you say you're a mortal, you're 
not immortal. I say when you are saying that you are human and that you are mortal, you're saying that you are married to a death force. You are part of a death aura because a mortal is one who was born dying. That's what a mortal is. A mortal is one who was born dying. An immortal is one who was born living, one who was born rising and continuously rising. Right? That's what an immortal is. Your humans are mortals, and they are born dying. They are born aging. They are born uh, uh, going one step closer to death. Why? Because the sun is killing them, baking them. It is speeding up their mortality rates purposely. This was all done by natural design. It was systematically done to kill off the mortals, to speed up their life expectancies. Now you have your scientists today who are trying to get into this uh, mindset of being immortal. So they've taken on the uh, task of trying to mix uh, metal and mechanical parts with human parts and creating so-called cyborgs. And, you know, they started off when they were giving people um, uh, uh, mechanical organs and things like that, uh, uh, certain uh, uh, replacements, mechanical livers and hearts and all kinds of artificial things to place in people because this was their way of trying to make mortals, humans, immortal. When they were doing the cryo cry cryogenics, of severing the head and freezing it, right? Say someone who had a disease or whatever, like what they did with Walt Disney, they would um, sever his head, froze it, though they say it's not true, it's a rumor, and they said they would bring him back when they had a cure for whatever disease was ailing him. These were all, uh, these were all tries at trying to produce mortality in an immortal people, a people who know they were destined to die, a people who basically live for death. Your humans have accepted death. They have ac actually accepted their mortality, right? This is why your humans have no problem committing suicide, you know, taking life, no conscience about behind it. I'm not saying every last human, but the majority of them, they don't have any conscience when it comes to that because these people know that they are born dying and their spirit as you call it or their uh, partial solar plex or their partial solar connection here which came from the almond beings as that fire that was blown into their chest which was the soul or a uh, connected soul that was uh, connected to this plane right that soul or that energy that drives them, that form of animation, stays here in this planet, in this realm, which makes them, which is why they uh, are referred to as ghosts, as spooks, spirits, you know, uh, beings that are trapped in these dimensions, in these lower dimensions, in these states on the planet who cannot leave this realm. This is why. Because they were created on this realm, so they will never be able to leave this realm. There is no bright lights for them. There is no higher calling for the human race. The human race were created to die. Your Amun beings, the ones who are descendants of the God race, they were born or they came into a natural form of manifestation out of the bloodline of the Amun beings. They were born to live. They were born to mature, not age. Our people were born to mature. There's a difference. Aging is to get closer to death, to get old, worn out. To mature is to get better, to become stronger, become ripened, become greater. So you are actually experiencing greater life. You are actually maturing into a form of greater life. Right? This is maturity. This is what we are naturally supposed to be going through as those of us who came from the natural manifestation of God. 
out of the genetics of God, not from the creation, but from the manifestation of God, the almond beings, which is a good portion of your so-called black race. However, since we had our bloodline mixed down with the humans, we've been getting closer and closer to death. This is why our um, generations, our grandmothers and grandfathers, 30 and 40 years old, they look worn out. They look worn out. They look older than as if we were 30 and 40 years old. Look at us now. We look younger than what they look because the genetics of mankind from the mixing of slavery put them close to death, aged them. It took them off of their natural maturity rate and put them on a rate of aging, rapid aging. This is why when they looked 40, they looked like they were damn near 50. We look at ourselves now. And we see ourselves and we're like, damn, I'm 40 years old, I'm 30 years old. When I looked at my mother, my father, my grandma, my grandfather, 35, 40, 45, 50, they didn't look like that. They looked older. And each generation you go back, they looked older. Now people can attribute it to the diet, that's part of it. But it's also because of what we had in our blood, what we allowed to come into our blood, to age us, to um, speed up. Our mortality rate, right? The things that the foreign, uh, uh, the foreign uh, blood, the foreign bloodline, the foreign DNA that was able to enter our DNA and cause a state of confusion and throw it off from its natural progression to stop us from what we were supposed to be naturally doing, and that is becoming immortal people, immortal beings. We were supposed to be on that line. Of becoming immortal Now many of our people knew that Right In your Bible I take this for a second where it says uh, I believe it was uh, You know your so called Jesus character Because I only quote certain things from the Bible Because they do have validity some of them When they talk about the son of man Or the son of God saying that Those of you who believe on me As many of you that believe on me Will have what Eternal life Everlasting life What did that mean Was that just a symbolic thing Or was that real Those of you who are in tune with me Or they say word For lack of a better word Believe in me But those who are in tune with me Meaning those of you who are in tune With my intelligence With my instruction With my codes of conduct Becoming like me Will live forever You will have everlasting life Eternal life You will become immortals that's what that's saying. But those of our people who are in tune with mankind, who do the ways of mankind, who don't follow the ways of Amen, the Omni beings, the true and living gods, they die faster and faster. We mix our seed with the human, right? And we inherit all kinds of uh, diseases, mortal diseases. You understand? Terrestrial earthbound diseases, cancer, Tourette's, all kinds of things, all kinds of diseases that we never that that's strange to us, foreign to us, things I can't even quote off my head. Blood diseases, cell diseases, blood disorders, uh, uh, palsy, all kinds of crippling diseases from the mixing of the human genetic inside of our genetic, throwing us off of our natural progression toward becoming immortals. I say that everybody on the planet, naturally, we're supposed to be growing into something. If the sun raises us, then we're supposed to be growing into something. Everyone has a purpose here, small, some great. But as a race of almond beings, those who are the natural manifestation of almond, the true and living God, we are supposed to be manifesting into them or to him. Are ye not gods? Are you not from the bloodline of God, the true and living God, Amen? So-called black man and so-called black woman, those of you who have not been mixed down with the human bloodline, that's real. You're supposed to be in that state of becoming immortal. That's your natural growth and your natural progression toward maturity. You're supposed to mature from mortal beings or people who were of the mortal bloodline and be maturing into immortal beings. 
And how do you do that? By opening, you know, opening yourself up for reception. By opening yourself up for reception. Those of you who receive, use the word believe, those of you, as many of you who believe on me, receive me, who are in tune with me, you will have everlasting life, ever-living life, meaning you will never die. You will become immortal. That is a knowledge that we're supposed to be inheriting in this day and time. When we, you have, you know, you have things that you're going to find in the future as we are going in our evolution that's going to extend our lives, certain herbs, certain things that we can take out of the earth, things we haven't even discovered yet. But some of us will never discover it because the idea of immortality is not real to us. We think it's natural for us to die. But if you are the natural manifestation of God, you are from the direct bloodline of God, then no, you're not supposed to die. You're supposed to continue on. Just because you came from people who have a mortal mindset, people who have that mortal mindset because they have the bloodline, unfortunately, of mortals now, because their bloodline has been corrupted, mixed out, to where their thoughts are of death, same as the human's. Where their thoughts are, I'm here, I'm born, I'm living, I'm dying. That's it. That's not supposed to be the way we think. Now they flip. Now that we got this mentality, a lot of our people are taking this mentality. Those of the uh, humans, the elite, they're trying to live forever. They're trying to push their mortality rate to the point of immortality because obviously they know something. They know that immortality is possible. They made some film with these uh, Roman, some Roman or Greek story called the Immortals. So even to have the idea in their head of a race of people or a race of beings or a God race that will live forever, how is that possible? If we come from these people and they were able to live forever, then obviously immortality is within our grasp. It is something that they discovered to become those immortal beings. It is something they discovered when they opened their mind up to receive higher intelligence and looked into things, received things, were geared toward things, were guided toward certain things to ingest, to take in, to eat, to certain ways to live, which extended their lives. This is real. This is not some so-called uh, abstract thing. This is real. This is knowledge. Knowledge in the future about life extension to where we're extending, extending our lives way beyond the hundreds, right? We're extending ourselves way beyond our 100s into the 200s, into the 300s, right? Was, that, was those uh, tales in the Bible real about people living 300 years, 400 years? Now, they said that was tribes of people living two and three and 400 years. Then they said, well, man's life got cut down to 120 as he became a mortal, as he became mortal being. That happened after the account of the 200 fallen messengers who came here, and they disobeyed that code of conduct not to mix their seed with the daughters of man. Because they were not supposed to do that. That shortened the bloodline of the children. Because the son, the daughters of man, or the humans, right? The daughters of mankind, they were meant to die. Their lifespan was short purposely. Right? Our lifespan was supposed to be longer. But we're dying at rapid paces before we get a chance to figure out what we are supposed to be doing, what are we supposed to be doing here, how our lives are supposed to be extended. Death is not supposed to be a natural thing for us. It is unnatural. It is unnatural for beings who were planted here. Death is very native to this planet where you have a beginning and an ending, so death and life are very native here. Death and life is not supposed to be native to people who are not from here. 
people who, for, who are from outside the solar system, and that is your bright race, those who are walking amongst the black race, those who have that DNA encoded message in them to advance or mature into the state of mortality, or in, excuse me, immortality. That's real. Certain ones of you will go on in your genetics and your bloodline to become immortals. You will come back through your bloodline if you don't go through that uh, elevation now within the time frame that you are allotted here. You will come back continuously in a new shell to experience that immortality. Well, you will never die. You will never die because you are not part of a creation. You were not part of a start of life. You were planted here. The majority of our people were planted here. People not of this realm, whereas your human life was uh, created here on this planet. It's native to this planet. Our people, the celestial ones, the immortals, are not native to this planet. They're native to a continuous eternal world that has no beginning or ending. So naturally, you would be, by nature, immortals, just as you are levitational beings, beings who could take flight, beings who can master the state of gravitational pull and levitational lift. This is real. The flight beings, the ones who are supposed to take flight through the air, the ones who live forever, the walking gods and goddesses. That's supposed to be you moving toward that state, but our people don't want that state. They've been seduced into being mortals. They've been seduced into uh, living to die. How do you know that? You look at what they do. I had a discussion with a couple of brothers where I said, you know, when you have a bunch of people who don't know how to conduct themselves properly, that is the people who are on their way out because part of being able to conduct yourself properly will extend your life. It gives you leeway to receive higher intelligence. But if you are constantly in a state of chaos mentally, then you cannot – and you cannot conduct yourself in an orderly fashion, then you will not receive higher thoughts that will extend your life because the people – who are or who become immortals are orderly people. They're not disorderly people. That's why it says in your Bible, it says the meek shall inhabit the earth. They will inherit the earth. What does that mean? The people who are not wild and loud and 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 uh, um, and uh, uh, vicious and you know violent people. It will be meek people. People who are thinkers. People who are orderly people. These will be the people that will receive the higher intelligence because these are the people who will keep the order in the future. These will be your immortals. These are your gods in training. Right? A lot of our people were able to see the possibility of be, being referred to as gods and goddesses and whatnot, but they didn't have the moral fiber or the discipline to make it to that state of immortality. They're not going to have it. They're not that much further ahead than the humans. In fact, they're on the same level as the humans with a few uh, with few certain things that we don't do. Certain, not at this point. Certain things that the humans have done and have fallen into that submental state. Some of our people have fallen into that submental state as well. You already know the things that our people are doing that are speeding them closer to mortality, to death. Look at what they do. Our people use drugs. They tattoo their bodies up and poison their bloodstream. They smoke cigarettes. Listen, look at all the things our people do that speed up their mortality. They drink liquor, flammable liquor. They drink. They, like I said, they they shoot heroin. All these things that are that's putting their health in jeopardy and speeding speeding them along closer to mortality, toward death. That is the mindset of the humans. Our people who are engaging in that way of life and that way of thinking are connected to the human race. They are not going to be candidates for immortality. 
It is not in their DNA. Their DNA has been altered. When our people do these things, when our people do the things of mankind, when they move in that submental state, they move as mortals. They keep their self from receiving immortal thoughts. They keep their self from receiving higher thoughts of immortality. They keep they 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 push that out because to them that's not real. To them, they think they're supposed to do the things they do just like mankind. They think they're supposed to naturally follow the way. They don't see a difference between themselves and the humans. I'm talking about the so-called black man and black woman, y'all don't see yourselves different from so-called humans, which is your Caucasians, your East Indians, and your Arabs. You don't see yourself as no different. That's why you follow the same religions, the same philosophies. You all think you're part of the human race. You don't see any difference, even though it's clearly a difference. That is a people who have come on the submental state, and they have become mortals. Just as I said, you gods have become men. You gods have become men. And the men and mankind is trying to become God. He's switching places. Like I said, they're trading places. God has become like mankind, and mankind is becoming like God. You are at the bottom. You put yourself in that submental state, and you are walking toward death every day. You kill each other at, a, at a, uh, alarming rates, rapidly, because you are becoming more and more like the mortals. All right? That's what this is. This code of conduct is supposed to induce an electrified state in you. It's supposed to induce it. It's supposed to push you past or push you in a certain direction to receive a certain level of intelligence via a frequency, right? Following a certain code. If you conduct yourself in a certain way on a higher level, then you will start to move toward immortality. That's real. If you conduct yourself on a lower state, on a submental state, like mankind, then you will move yourself closer to mortality. I'm going to say it again, like it says in the Bible, and that was real. But those of you, as many of you as believe on my name, now whether that was the so-called son of man or God himself that said that, I don't really know where the quote was, but I believe it was the so-called son of God, the son of Amun. For those of you that believe on my name, you shall have everlasting life. That was a quote out of the Bible, but that was real. Those who receive that high frequency, those of you who are open to receive that intelligence from God, that's real. God is a thinking man. God is a thinking man. He is an ah man, an omni being, a continuous immortal being. In that very name, ah men, omni, omnipresent, omnipotent. You can't be omnipresent, omnipotent, and not be immortal. If you come from the bloodline of God, then you have to have it in your DNA, in your genetics to become immortal. A small percentage of our people who are moving amongst the black race, a.k.a. the bright race, you are the immortals walking the planet. You have the ability to become immortal beings. It's in your DNA. It's locked up in your DNA. And you have many people right now trying to unlock that within you, trying to mix in with you, trying to find that connection. You are the real fountain of youth. You are the fountain of youth. They think it's the entire black race, but it's not. It is not the entire black race. It is only a chosen few. It is only a chosen few who are actually the bright race, who have evolved into that who have evolved into that state of knowing, who have evolved into receiving or being able to receive that intelligence, who know that they are different, they can see it. They don't have to listen to somebody tell them in a book that they're different. They don't have to listen to mankind tell you through his so-called scientific equations and his, his philosophies that you're different. You already know that. You can look at your hair. You can look at your skin. You can tell that you're not the same as these people. 
And I have to stress this all the time in these broadcasts because without this going into the heads of our people, if we don't receive that, then we can't even imagine or fathom or be able to pull in an image of immortality because we still are moving on a submental state towards mortality. This is real. Everything in the society is driving us toward death purposely. Everything in the society drives us toward death. Right? And we oblige. We move on that road to mortality. Everything is done to snuff out our bloodline. Why is that? Because they know on that bloodline, in that line, is an evolutionary line toward immortality. So many of you have to go through sexually transmitted diseases, through homosexuality and lesbianism. All these things have to be thrown on the generations of people. Drugs, all these death auras and vibrations have to be thrown on these almond beings, these children or these descendants of almond. These things have to be thrown on the descendants of God to slow down their evolution. And those of our people who take the bait, you have moved close to mortality. I heard somebody say on Facebook to my, well, they gave us drugs in our community, but did anybody tell you to use the drugs? Hmm? Yeah, well, you know, they, they, they ain't leave us no other way. What are you talking about? You chose that way. There's always other ways. You chose the way. You chose death over life. You chose mortality over immortality. You killed your whole bloodline. When you make a bad decision or a bad choice and things like that, you kill your whole bloodline. You can kill your whole bloodline off. You can shorten your lifespan just by shutting off the possibility of higher frequency and intelligence that could push you past that present point and state. But you don't open your mind to it because you've made your mind up already. What, what's the first, what's the most favorite thing of the black man to say now? Man, I, I'm, I'm I'm ready to die for this. Ain't that what the black man, when he's supposed to be so serious about something, he's like, man, I'm ready to die for this. Right? And we think we're saying something brave. We got that from mankind. When he says he ready, he, 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 he's ready to die for something, that's nothing big for him to say because he's born dying. So death is always in his mentality. Taking life taking his own life, just taking life, mortality, death, is always in his mentality. Mort. It's a Latin word, I believe. It means death, mort. French, they can't translate it into Italian, mort, death. Mortal. Saying that humans are meant, are born to die. So it's already in their mentality. They don't fear, they learn, they're starting to learn not to fear death. They kill themselves in a heartbeat because this is where they're geared toward. This is natural for the human. We don't say, I, I'm, ready, I'm, gonna, I'm ready to live for something. Our people are quick to say, I'm ready to die for something. It's a trick. It's a trick to push you closer to mortality, more toward the thinking of the human. Instead of the almond, which is supposed to be continuous life, continual life, immortal life, eternal life. See, this is something hard for our people to fathom because our people, like I said, if they get like 50, 60 years and, and they basically walk on the planet for 60, 70 years and they've done nothing, or they've accomplished nothing real in their life, they say, oh, now I'm ready to lay down and die. Right? Because they don't really have a clue what they're here for. So they're ready to lay down and die after they've walked the planet for 60 or 70 years because it was 60 and 70 years of nonsense, right? There was nothing being used and nothing being geared toward stirring or bringing life, right? Now, a lot of our people do something, right, inside the sexual act of bringing life when the when the man goes, you know, and that was something our people were used to doing, where the man goes out and he lays his seed all over the place. That's his way of spreading life, planting life. That's his way of planting life. 
Now, I'm not telling people to go out there and plant seeds all over like y'all been doing, not taking care of your children and whatnot, but I'm just giving you an analogy of planting life before he succumbs to mortality. This was like you had older men who did this. And, you know, some uh, some of the people, they do this by accident. They just having sex. I just used the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for a second. When he planted seeds in those women, those young women, he was planting life. He was planting his DNA, his genetics in those women purposely. It wasn't just about sex. He was planting his life in those women so that he can continue his bloodline. Because, obviously, like I said, he realized that if he relied on his bloodline from his first wife, that would be the end of it. It would have a mortality rate because he realized these people were moving back into the circle of death, a.k.a. religion. And what a lot of his children do, they went back into regular Islam. They went into regular Islam, not back, I should say. They went into regular Islam, which represents the circle of death. Religion represents the circle of life and death. So he planted his bloodline, his seed, in younger women because younger people represent what? The future. They represent the future. That's why he planted his seed in younger women. He said, I had to plant my seed in fertile soil so that his bloodline could live on in the future. He will come back in the bloodline of his children or his grandchildren, and through them he will come back because he has made an immortal impression. This is what a lot of our people miss. This is what a lot of our people miss when they don't talk about immortality because they think it's something spooky. They think it's something unreal, but it's very real. Just as at one point in time, we didn't have a cure or to talk about a cure for AIDS or for cancer or these things. Back talking about that 20 years ago, that was unreal. But if you were lucky enough to make it 20 years past that, it's a very real conversation to have now. Very real conversation where people are being cured from that. That's pushing you one step closer to life. When people like Dr. Sabi come and they cure that, and you know they cure that disease and that sickness, that's pushing one step closer to more immortality. A so-called black man, who I refer to as a bright man like Dr. Sabi, is pushing or helping to push our generation one step closer to immortality by removing these obstacles, i.e., diseases, out of our way, offering something to clean up these diseases out of our bloodline, these things that are being planted artificially in our way to slow down and to create a death aura in our bloodline, right? Guns are constantly planted in your black neighborhoods because these people are irresponsible and they pick up these guns and they kill each other in a heartbeat for nothing. Constantly being geared toward pushing you to immortality. This is all being done to push you toward, uh, uh, excuse me, toward mortality. I'm saying not mortality. Everything on this planet is geared to push you toward mortality. This is why the so-called bright race, I'm not even going to say the black race anymore because the black race already has a death aura on it. It already has a mortality rate on it through your children. How they get you black women, you know, to go out here first and foremost and screw and have sex with no kind of uh, protection or anything. You get pregnant from men that you don't even want to really be with. You get you get pregnant from these men, and then you go out and kill the children inside of you, right? You abort the life inside of you. So they push you or they offer you a way out. But it's all aimed at creating mortality rate. They offer these things to you, and you take them as an easy option instead of being responsible. But it's all aimed at mortality. Whereas they offer, mankind offers his people ways to live out or live further or live better. See how we get things backwards now? You hear the black man and the black woman, they'll say something like, you know, when you're trying to tell them to eat healthy and eat right because we want to extend our lives and, you know, we're trying to get on that line of becoming that immortal people, people who are living longer, 
longer, longer until we're living forever. You hear people say, oh, well, you're going to die or something. Yeah, that's the classic black answer. I might as well eat smoke drink because I can get hit by a bus or a car or whatever. That's the mindset of a mortal, one who is destined to die. Right? Now, a lot of people say, oh, everybody's going to die someday and whatnot. So what you talking about? No. Everybody's not going to die someday. Certain people are already dead and they're waiting to lay down. Then you got others who are alive even beyond laying down because their mentality, their mind was so strong, their energy, their soul was so strong, they're going to continue on. They're going to continue on. You got certain people who are so strong, their soul is so strong, and their energy is so strong that their body, it preserves, their soul preserves their body where they don't even break down or decompose uh, uh, when they pass away, when they pass out of the physical shell, when their body when their body lays down and passes out of the physical shell. Certain people don't even decompose because their light and their energy was so strong and it charged their bodies. And it stopped the breaking down of their bodies. It preserved them that light and that energy. Right? So that soul, that mind, that essence of who that person was constantly seeks out a new frame, a new body to inhabit. It's like like I said before, it's like getting out of an old car and looking to buy a new car, looking to get into a new car. The same way you switch out old cars for new cars is the same way we would switch out old bodies or decaying shells for new shells, for better shells. That's how we saw our immortality going. That's how it's supposed to go. We're supposed to be conscious of that switch out. There's not supposed to be a time where we're going in darkness. We're supposed to, when we pass out, in this physical realm, i.e. trade off bodies that we call death. When we pass now that we're supposed to be fully aware, fully in tune that we are actually moving from one body to another. We're supposed to be aware of that. That's supposed to be a natural progression in the evolution of our people in the almond race. We're supposed to be we supposed to be able to see ourselves switching to our soul, our mind, our essence going out of one frame and going into another one. And being reborn into the world. We're supposed to be seeing that. We're supposed to just constantly be switching bodies and moving forward. Using these bodies as vehicles until they break down. And then we get out and we get in another vehicle. We get in a new vehicle. Like switching out whips. That's how we're supposed to switch out bodies. Simultaneously, quickly. That's immortality. Until we get to the point where our bodies no longer break down. Where we can use a body for a thousand years, two thousand years, three thousand years. That's where we're supposed to be headed in this natural progression. That's where we're supposed to be going. But, you know, to the people who can't get this, this is far fetched. I'm gonna take a call. Seven five seven. You're on the air seven five seven. Peace, Nolan. What's going on? Peace. Great show. Uh, well, great broadcast. Uh, also, the one on the real independent, bright businessman. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was great. I just had a question. Uh, what do you think as far as uh, physical evolution into the future? Will there be any physical type evolution? I mean, I know it's always going to be a mental evolution, but as far as the physical evolution, what is what is that all about? Well, we're supposed to be going in a physical evolution. There's, in order for there to be a mental evolution, a physical evolution has to follow. And, you know, because the mental and the the mental and the physical are together. People get it twisted when they say mental, and you know, mental is supposed to proceed in a material evolution. That's what we refer to it as. You know, what we don't really say in the state of mental physical, we say material, meaning continuous. To, um, uh, uh, physical form is supposed to be a constant physical evolution as well. So when we say we go, we, you know, as we're speeding up in our intelligence, we're supposed to be getting uh, 
we're supposed to be getting in tune with that levitational side of who we are. We're supposed to be uh, uh, moving faster. We're supposed to be moving toward uh, immortal life. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Mm. So you think, uh, you know, with 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 us being mixed with the human genetic, that's that's what slowed all that down. Yep. As far as uh, okay. Yep. Absolutely. That's what slowed it down. Look at our people now. Look at look at look at how they live. Look at how they act. They have are they? Would you say they on a, a life aura or on a death aura? Definitely a lot of death. You know, it's you know it's becoming like uh, common to not even like me personally. Like you know, I don't even like engaging a lot of people for a long period of time because then it just turns into you know it's like you can literally feel yourself getting dumber almost, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's just how I feel, you know? No, I mean, I, I feel it's, you know, listen, everybody's coming along in this vibe of the bright race and the people who are trying to, that's why I said it's going to come a time where our people are coming together in the state of Mintel because you're going to, you know, we're going to be looking at people and, you know, me and a couple of the brothers was out today and, we, you know, uh, we was promoting, you know, we, we, we look at black people, man, and just look at our, you know, the so, so-called, I can't even say our people no more, but you look at black people, man, and just be like, you know, they're getting worse and worse. They're getting worse yeah, and, and we, worse. And it's hard yeah. to listen to the ones, like, you know, when they say, uh, oh, we all the same, and, you know, and, and, and that's the type of mentality where it's like, Yo, know, why would you even say that we're all the same? Like you, you know that we're not the same. Yeah, well, you know. I mean, and like I, just saying that, like that, that, that just puts us back hundreds of thousands of years. Just saying something like we're all the same, hmm. or you know, we're all uh, Africans, stuff like that. Hmm. You know, um, that's, um, that, that's just how I feel about it. You know. Well, the problem is with our people, you know, even coming into this bright evolution right here, our people don't know how to tune them out. Our people still want to run to mankind and whatnot, knowing that these people have a death wish, a death aura and things on them, a mortality rate on them, and want to infest you with that mort- uh, that mortality rate and that death aura. You st- our people still run to them for validation, to see what they say. You know, the, the favorite thing of the so-called uh, black man is uh, – Oh, you know, you saying like somebody hit me up in the uh, what's the name? We was talking about, you know, when I was talking about the business um, men and black people being consumers. The first thing um, um, this person does is he tell me, oh well, white people do the same thing too. I'm like, see, <laughs> see that that's the justification for the black man acting like a simpleton because white people do it too. That that's that's the justification. But that just goes show you hand in hand. The black man, he's like I said, he's like the black version, the dark version of the white man. It's like, you know, it's, it's you know, uh, you know, same people, white human, black human. That's why I said we don't just we just don't deal with none of it, because like I said, you know, it, it's, it's and I understood white, when you were you talking know. about uh, like about black businesses and things like that. You know, he, I understood that. You know how you mm-hmm. said um, you. You know, it's too it, – it, like when people put emphasis on a black business, they mm-hmm. make it sound like, you know, they just – they want to cater to black people, you know. And, and a lot of times, like some of them, they actually, you know, after a while, they actually come out and, and, and feel bad. Like, you know what, I've just been catering to black people too long and, you know, stuff like that. But, yeah, I, I totally understood you about the, the bright the bright businessman kind of concept. And when you said uh, you said you writing a book, God is a businessman. Whew. <laughs> man. <laughs> no, it's actually oh, going to be man. God is a supreme businessman. God is the supreme. Mm. God is the God is the first supreme businessman. I'm always altering the title, but yeah, God is a businessman. God is a supreme businessman. That's going to be the book coming out. Wow. Yeah, it definitely was. Uh, there's a lot of motivation right there, man. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say, man. Just wanted to chime in with you. All right. All right. Thanks for adding that music, brother. All right. No problem, new man. You have a all good right. day, man. Peace. You Good too. night. Good night.
510. My brother Reginald, what's up? Yo, what's up, man? What's going on, brother? Uh, listening to you, man. Like, wow. Uh, so immortal, immortal beings have this to look forward to uh, existing here on, on, on this earthly plane in physical bodies for, for extended periods of time. That's what you're saying? Say it, say it one more time. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I, immortal beings have to look forward to existing on the earth plane for extended periods of time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we're stuck here. So the immortal beings are stuck here in these physical shells, these shitting, pissing, sweating, funky breath, funky armpits. Oh my God! This is this is what they're gonna have to endure being here. That's well, a lot of our well, a lot of our people are not doing anything to show that they're supposed to move forward on a higher level. You, you know, our people say that they want things to be better, and they want things that you know they want to evolve and they want to be on a higher level, but they're still doing things of a lower state. How can you talk about you want things to be better on a higher state? But then you're still doing things of a low nature. You're still on that submental state. Our people want change, but they don't want to change themselves. They don't want to evolve, but they want things to just change overnight. And you know, they don't want to do anything to make that ultimate sacrifice of their old ways or their that or dropping that death aura and moving to that uh, life aura, where the black man is no longer saying, you know, I, I'm ready to die for this. He he he's transforming into a bright man, saying, I'm ready to live for this. Yeah, I was just thinking, like, man, I'm really sick of like a, the the phys- the the functions of the physical body that you have to deal with day. You know what I mean? Well, the, the the black man, he don't he don't make things better. You're not supposed to look at it that way. You're supposed to constantly be feeling great and whatnot physically, because like I said, the black man, he want to smoke weed, he want to get drunk, he do all the things that carry a death aura. He don't want to stop them things, you know. The average black man, the black man, they don't want to stop them things. They want to do all these things that carry a death aura. But then they want to talk about these spiritual people that they in tune with God. God deals with life, constant life. All right, hey, this is my last question on this subject. The um, 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 they don't have physical bodily functions, correct? Say it now. Um, and beings, do they have physical bodily functions? Well, being yes, that they... I'm, no, I'm, I'm talking about all the excretions that we have to endure being physical. Like sweat and bodily all that nasty shit. Yeah. Why do you consider it nasty? Because it 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 really is. It it really is. Why? Just just think about. It. Don't take a bath for a week. You know what I'm saying? It's not. It's really not a. It's not a good thing. Well, the, well, the things that you have, the things that we are, um, you know, while we have to wash ourselves and things like that, you know, is because of the things you put in your body. You know, you got certain people that could walk around and not wash themselves for a week if they eat a certain diet that's not, like, not eating heavy land animals and things like that because, you know, a lot of times when you're funky like that or, you know, you're not smelling good because you're eating bad food. So that comes out of your that comes out of your pores. That's where all your odor comes from because when I was eating uh, uh, um when I was eating like uh, vegetable diets and like you know small like fish here and there and things like that and cut down on you know I wasn't eating no beef no pork none of that stuff I can go three four days maybe even a week without washing and I didn't stink. Wow. Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm I just drank water and I drank water like I said went to the bathroom I didn't have to wash up nothing. I mean I did I just tested just to see because. You know, and I, and, it, and it showed me I didn't have no bad odor coming from me or nothing. I didn't have to put no deodorant on or nothing. So a lot of that comes from what you eat, what I'm you consume. I'm gonna do that test myself because I I I'm a vegetarian. Mm-hmm. 
I don't eat any meat, any no chicken, nothing. So I'm, I'm a good at that. Do you drink? You got to drink plenty of water. Yeah, I drink plenty a of water. Half, I drink a gallon and a half a day. Mm-hmm. And now that I'm running, I I think I, I'm drinking a little more. Mm-hmm. Now that yeah, you I, know, I you just was wondering. I just was wondering if if we're gonna have to continue to um, exist in physically, you know, and like in the, you, in the physical body. Well, you're always going to exist in a physical form, but certain things you might not, you're not going to have to do in abundance. Like, you know, as you start to discover things that you don't need or you stop doing things to kill yourself or to slow down your evolution, you know, and that going toward that state of immortality, things you stop doing, that will start to, you know, uh, get rid of the things that you were doing in the old world. Okay, I got it. I got it now. I got you now. So uh, we will exist in physical form, but um, the things that we that that we do in this in this in this time, uh-huh. uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of a lot of the unnecessary things that we do. They will be gone. Yeah. And it will it will be a better existence. I get it. Depends okay, on I, it, de- but it depends on the people. Like I said, everybody ain't going. That's that's it, everybody's not going. Yeah, you know, a lot of our people, if we, our people ain't trying to get it right now, if our people are not trying to be the lightning rods for this new intelligence that's coming here, then they ain't going. Because it ain't no good to be sitting here saying, oh, well, you know, I get it, but I'm still doing the same stuff. And you yeah. don't, obviously, you don't get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was speaking of the, the immortals, the true immortals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. And, okay. Hey, thanks a lot for um, taking my call and answering my question. I appreciate it. I'm continuing listening. No problem, brother. All right. Take a next call. 718. 718, you're on the line? Hello? Oh, yes. Hi. How are you? How you doing? I'm doing great. Um, my friend um, hooked me up to you, and I was just listening to the conversation. Mm-hmm. And I just want to say um, you're doing a great job. Um, and my concern was that one, what was we go on as people, as people of color, because I live right here in Brooklyn, and I own my own business, and I see it every day, like, we're not moving anywhere, not so much financially, but yes, that too, but mentally, and I deal with people every day on a massive level, and whoo, the kind of conversations we have is like, Boo boo woo woo stuff. It's 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 not like really it's shallow. Not really yeah, shallow. very. Shallow. You're not the so only I'm, one. We our, our people are getting that all over the place right now, mm-hmm. and the ones who are recognizing that that's starting to that's starting to severing in the so-called black race. A, t- a, a ripple is starting to happen. But God, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Got it. No, 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 no. That's basically what I'm saying. Like, like you 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 saying it's all over, and it really is, and. And I just don't think that we're just to blame for it. I think, you know, of course, the media is a big blame for it. Um, the school systems, and my favorite thing is, you know, you don't like the school system, pull your child out, homeschool it. Oh, well, I don't have the time. But you know somebody else who have the time. I mean, you have to do your work. We we do our work on going to get these master's degrees at these institutions, these uh law degree, so do your work, invest in your family, invest in yourself. And these are the kind of conversations I try to give to people, but that's too intense for them. That's like, oh, my God, that's too much work. Mm -hmm. I I can't do that, you know. So are you feeling what I'm saying? It's just like it's it's not just us. We've been brainwashed into it. It's it's constantly we're just thrown at it. And we're not giving up because it's it's in our food, it's in the TV, it's everywhere. So it's like it's hard for them to see light when they when they just see dark, you well, know. No. They, well, I mean, that aids in it. Well, first of all, where where's your business at in Brooklyn? Because we we in Brooklyn as well. Where where's your business? Okay, at? yeah, um, it's Piccaninny's at Natural Hair Salon on Franklin Avenue. Okay, okay. What's your name, sister? I'm Sheba. Sheba. Okay. All right. We are. Uh, um, before I even answer that, we're doing. Uh, you are you familiar with the Restoration Plaza? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, it's not too far from me. Yeah, yeah. the rest of we're doing, we're having uh, the State of Mintel's Supermen, Superwomen Project December 16th uh, on Sunday. So we were telling people to come out in the tri-state area where I'm going to be speaking and answering questions, and you know, live and direct. Okay. Uh, what time does it start? It starts at 3 p.m. December 16th on okay, the first floor. I'll check it out. Are you the first, uh, my first floor? Yeah, yeah on the first okay. floor. Are you my are you a Facebook friend of mine? No, I'm not a friend friend of Facebook at all. Oh, you're not on but Facebook. But I definitely um check you out and listen to your radio. I try to be as underground as possible, really. Uh -huh. But I know for you and uh, you know people try to say that's for your business. You know the type of work I do is shows, so that's gonna bring me business. Okay. Well, like I said, we're doing that Sunday, uh, December 16th. Uh, if you're in the chat room, my sister is going to post that up. Uh, Dyra, Sister Dyra, please post that up, you know, for the sister to see. We're going to be there. Um, one of the oh, things I say, yeah, one of the things I say that, um, one of the things I say that's um, helping and slowing us down is the mixing in with uh, people, like I said, that have that death aura, the people that had that first and we when uh, infested with that mentality and that, you know, mindset of we just here, we just living, we just eating, and we just dying. That's the mentality our people have here, that we're just going to die, we just come here to die. And that's not really by nature who we're supposed to be. Absolutely. You know, that's I agree. not who we are supposed to be by nature. We're supposed to be living and maturing and evolving into the future as a new people. So if you know, you're not hearing that coming from all people in this day and time because we're at a um, we're at a crossroads right now where there's going to be a separation in the black race, the intelligent ones, meaning the ones who are in tune with God, versus the ones who are in tune with man, meaning the people who are having these simple-minded conversations, which you're talking about, uh, 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 Housewives of Atlanta or loving yeah. hip hop or just some simple-minded nonsense. Right. Right, you know, right. there's going you you're gonna be sitting there because you grew up in the same environment as these people, so you can't really blame the TV and all this stuff because you grew up around that, you sat around these people, and why is it that you didn't go in that sub mental state? You're looking to reach higher to another level, and they're still at the, but, they're still reaching the bottom. Yeah, but I decided I didn't want that. That's the thing. They don't have what it is to turn it off. You know yeah. what I said. I mean, like you, you probably decided you didn't want it. I didn't decide I didn't want it. And I just think that, like, our children, this is what they've been raised at because they, their parents have to work all the time. So, therefore, they have nothing else to do but go home, play a video game, or watch these movies or watch watch TV. And mm -hmm. with us, when we was growing up, we played outside. We, we did other stuff. The TV wasn't, like, our focus. The TV was... Um, like um, in a little treat for us or something. Like mm -hmm. for them, TV, I mean, I could be hanging out with four people and three people on their cell phone talking or texting. Like the communication for another human being is just, is just not even a necessity. <laughs> it really is a necessity, but for them, like for most people, it's just like uh, I'm just, I'm just here. So, let me get on my cell phone or let me start texting. We're not available for anything else but this this technology, the media, food and it's 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 um it's it's a form of brainwashing. I don't think people can help themselves. That's what I'm saying. Whether it's black or white, they the white people are trapped, trapped in it too. Well, that that's the thing. That's people who are mentally weak. You know, that, that, you're talking about people who are mentally weak versus people who are mentally strong. You know, the people who are mentally weak, they'll tell you that they can't help it. But why is it that you can help it? Why is it that I can help it? Why is it that we can help not getting trapped into this thing? And so this is this is basically what it is. We're always going to be in a stage where the people who are going to be the strongest mentally are going to survive versus the people who are going to right. die, the, the ones who are going to be mentally weak that are going to fall through the cracks. And that's where we're at right now. So, you know. People are choosing where they want to be. People are going to be in tune with the true and living God who is an intelligent man, you understand, and 
as we are moving toward that true and living God who is an intelligent man, we are becoming intelligent men and women in that image and after that likeness, leaving things like religion and culture and all these things behind, and we are becoming more evolved mental beings. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be moving toward that immortal state, like that God being that we came out of. So if we're not doing that, then we're going backwards into that death order, like what you see with these people doing. So right. they're going to zero each. They're going to zero themselves out. But how can we be something as embrace change to like the everyday people? What can we do as people who who do see something beyond this? How can we keep being positive? How do we keep uh, other than like reading? You know, great books, going to great lectures, being around like-minded people. But every day somebody's coming at you. How do you keep your vibration high? How can stay strong for you? Like, state of, I'm just well, asking you. Well, that's why we form the state of mentality. The state of mentality is a, a future intelligence movement or an intelligence movement to keep that intelligence uh, uh, going strong and raising out a new and intelligent people out of the black race because the black race, I'm going to just say it like it is, you just forget the black race. Only a few of our people are going to come out of that who are going to be the elect who are going right. to raise their intelligence. The rest, of the rest of the black race and the human race, for that matter, the majority of them is finished. So, you know, they, they you, right. can't, you can talk to them till you're blue in the face. I don't even waste my time no more. This is for people who are vibrating on a higher mental oh, frequency. Good. So, you know, we form we, we form the state of mental, which is, you know, and we refer to ourselves as mentalists, those who are receiving higher intelligence from God, who are in tune receiving intelligence, moving forward to advance in our way of thinking. Sometimes people refer to it as spirituality, though it's really a higher mental connection that we, we are forming to even start moving in that evolutionary state mentally and physically. So, you know, this is what it is. You can go check us out at bsom.info. Okay. You know what the state of mental is. Like I said, it's an intelligence movement because you're not going to see our people engaging in anything. Even these so-called lectures out here, a lot of these lectures are still based on the old ways of thinking that right. are that are based in death. I mean, if you're talking about uh, culture and pan-Africanism and all the Egyptology and all the stuff our people are still talking about, I mean, those societies and cultures are dead. So if you're putting energy into those ancient societies and cultures instead of moving forward and forming new things and bringing new things out, then you are focused and you are becoming mortal people because you're focused on dead people. Mortal people are dead people. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much, and um, it was great talking to you, and I keep listening. Okay. I hope to see you out here December. All right. Next, uh, next not this Sunday, next Sunday, December yeah, next 16th. Sunday. What's your name again? Okay. So we Sheba. raise your hand. And, what's your name, Siobhan? No, Sheba. Sheba, I'm sorry, I got you. All right, see you next okay. Sunday, sis. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. I'm going to play a well, let me see. I'm going to play a little bit of music because I've been running my mouth. Hmm, what do I want to play? The whole idea of immortality is in a time frame. Immortality is a line that we will cross. The need, somebody asked, why would people not want to wash themselves or clean themselves? Water is is a necessity in this realm. Water was created to drink, to keep your body hydrated, you know, to keep that... uh, body cooled off and also to wash off the dead skin called dust that's flying throughout this uh, atmosphere that's flying in the air. You have dead skin. Again, there's a death or a mortality rate on this planet. Dead skin. Half the dust that's on your body that collects on your body and on your skin is dead skin. Right? Because you always have people who are breaking down and dissolving and decaying and this is shedding and people just in general are shedding skin. A lot of people still have that reptilian genetic in them where they shed skin. Everybody pretty much shed skin. You know. So it's still that reptilian genetic that was in the soil and uh, and went into the majority of our people's DNA. So we shed skin. Same way the reptiles shed skin. 
right? And it's a need to have that water to clean it off. Everything that we have here is necessary for now. This is a state of evolution. When I was mentioning people, I saw that our sister took an issue with me mentioning the human race, and we, and you know, people always say, you know, that's them, that's not us. But a lot of us are doing the or acting like them, or acting like other people. So unless you point that out, unless you point out how people are acting, you know, because everybody wants to say, oh, I'm spiritual, or I'm immortal, or I'm a higher being, but you're doing the ways of lower people, of lower nature. Who are you fooling? You have not done the work to become that. You're still overly emotional. Right? You have not transformed yourself into being sentimental people. You're still out of whack in some way. You're still uh, painting your body up. You're still getting high. You're still doing the things you're doing in that submental state, but then you want to claim to be on a higher bank or a higher frequency. Our people want to evolve and advance, but they don't want to do the work to get there. They think, like, oh, I got it already. I don't need this. That's the problem with our people. When you start to tune out things about the advancement or the betterment, and you know you're doing the same thing, you've done nothing to change yourself, then that's a sign that you are part of that mortality rate. You will have that mortal mindset. Mortals carry the mindset where it's not necessary for change. That's a, more, that's a mortal or a, 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 more, a, more, a mortal mindset, a dead mindset, because a person who is moving on that uh, frequency of becoming immortal knows that they can always change, that there's always room for change, there's always room for betterment. If you still sit up here smoking cigarettes, you still sit up here smoking weed, you still getting body piercings, tattooing yourself up, you still out here, you you know, you, you being homosexual, like all that stuff you doing that you got from mankind, if you still engaging in these things, then you are part of that mortality rate. You're part of that dead race. That dead people, because nothing in you has changed to turn over into life. Nothing has changed with you to turn over or transform you into a life being, and into an immortal being. Life beings are immortal beings by nature. True living people are immortal. You're supposed to be growing into a mortal state. This is a stage of growth and evolution. You're supposed to be coming from amongst the dead mentally and physically. So as your thoughts change, as you're starting to speed up, you're starting to alter your physical composition. You're starting to eat certain foods. You're starting to cut out certain things that age you, that kill you, that make you mortal. See, our people want to sit up here all day and talk about, oh, well, I get that. I'm spiritual. I don't need that. I'm God. I'm God. But you niggas, I still want to smoke weed. You still want to get high. You still want to smoke poison. You still want to get drunk off liquor. You know, you still want to do the things of this world that keep you in a mortal state. But then you want to talk about, oh, I'm good, I don't need that, I'm God body, and you falling down. You in the club, you doing the same things of the day. Who you kidding? You not you not impressing nobody. You not fooling nobody. Stop it. Unless you're ready to do the work. Unless you're ready to change, unless you're ready to do something different in your life, to acknowledge that you have transformed into from a mortal being, that you started the transformation from a mortal being to an immortal being, unless you have made the changes and opened yourself up for transformation to start that journey, because it's not, oh, I'm going to live forever and this, that, and the third. You have to understand what your purpose is for even wanting to live forever. Because a lot of our people just want to live forever and call themselves being immortal because y'all scared to die. Because you're scared to be, you know, to go in the ground and have the worms and the maggots eat you or whatever, you know, you know, fate you feel is going to befall you. You have to understand what your purpose is here. Do you exist as part of a living collective or a dead group? A living collective or a dead group? You should have a reason for wanting to be immortal, not because you're just scared to die. That's not, a, that's not a reason for wanting to be immortal. That's not a, a reason for wanting to live forever. See, this is something our people don't get. It sounds good. 
right? It sounds good to talk the spirituality stuff. It sounds good to talk about, you know, the supreme beings and the almond beings and things like that. Like I said, it, you know, you want to be a warrior into their world. You don't want to live in their world. You want to be a warrior into their world. You want to be a warrior into the world of God. But that's as far as you want to go. You don't want to actually be God because to be God, to be goddesses, to be God beings and God um, God beings, you that takes a, a open mind for transformation and transmission. You have to go into a transmission, a transmissive state. Right? You have to go into a transmissive state. You have to go from a submissive state to a transmissive state. And if you're not open to go to a transmissive state to receive. Because with that reception comes responsibility. If you're not ready to receive that higher intelligence to transform you and to start doing certain things and to start living a certain way and cut out the things that you're doing on this lower level in this submental state, then don't even bother. Stop talking. Don't even talk about, oh, well, you know, I'm good. You know, uh, why are we thinking about it? No, it's ain't about black and white. This is not about us and them. This is about you. This is about the people who are listening, the people who are looking to transform and transfigure themselves from mortal beings to immortal beings. That's a long journey. That's a road. That's not overnight because, see, black people got this idea that everything is snap overnight. It don't work like that. Everything is in stages and in growth. Black people have no patience. They want everything right now. You know, they were geared toward that. That's people who pull through life, people who don't want to do the work on themselves, people who don't want to do uh, go from dead people to living people, people who don't want to transform themselves, people who don't want to stop doing what they're doing. You understand? People with short attention spans. You know, your attention span has to be long to go from mortal to immortal. It has to be continuous. You constantly have to be focused. Do you, you know, that's a big thing with the hip hop is on like y'all because y'all copy that. Yeah, I'm focused. I'm focused. You know, when these guys talk about they focused on their career and whatever to spread nonsense and to just make money. But like I said, to actually be focused on your own evolution, to actually be focused on changing and trans and opening yourself up to receive trans from um, transmission to change yourself. No, you still want to smoke cigarettes. You want to smoke weed. When you talk about changes like that, oh, I don't want to hear all that, blah, blah, blah. You know, I just want to hear the knowledge on this, that, and the third. Then go listen to a science fiction show. That's what you want to hear. You want to hear uh, 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 some science fiction. You want to hear about Pleiades. You want to hear about Series A, Series B. This is not the broadcast for that. This is not the broadcast. This is a real, a real, a very real form of transformation, mental and physical. I'm talking about transforming a people from black people to bright people, from people in darkness to people in light, from dead people to living people, people who have actually already been living, people who have been un, uh, 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 un, un, out of tune to people who are coming in tune, to, from people who are waking up, not dead people, but sleep people. You understand that? People who have been in a deep sleep, people who have been in this black state, this state of darkness, where they, everything out their mouths is reactionary, where everything out of their mouths is, oh, you know, why are you worrying about the white man and white this and white that? I'm not talking about that. This is all about you. This is all about you. It's not about the TV. It's not about the drugs in the community. It's not about reality. Don't, it's, don't worry about that. The weak, that stuff is put there to occupy weak people, to occupy mentally weak people. I could watch th things. I could watch TV. Like people say, oh, well, brother, I don't watch TV because, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's a, uh, uh, I watch TV. I watch movies. I watch all the, don't, you know, I sit up there and look at it for what it is. It's funny. It's entertaining. But then so, so, so are certain people that are around me when I walk out in the street every day, I get a show. I look at, I look at everything like it's just like, like, wow, comedy. Drama, but I don't let that. I don't let myself get sucked into that. That's part of developing a mental defense. That's part of developing a strong mental defense, because you're on your life vibration. You're on your life form frequency. You are transmitting and transforming into a life being. 
that puts you in a stage of immortality. So you're going to start knowing where you're going to be resonating from and where you're moving forward to. You're going to understand or have an ultra standing of what your purpose is here. That's when you start going into that state of transformation because there's a slot for you to fill. But if you don't know what your purpose is, then you don't know what slot you go in. You just here doing what? Smoking weed, going to the club, talking about nigga nonsense? That's what you here for? Foolishness? Those are the people who are in the death are in the death aura. That's your black community. Hell, that's your human race. They the majority of your human race, they in they on the death aura. That's why your doctors and all these people, they want to get you out of here. That's why they're not going to give you no cures for cancer. They're not going to give you no cure for AIDS. They're not going to um, suggest no holistic cure. They know it's cures for that stuff. That's why they'll keep creating diseases for you and stuff like to kill you all faster because y'all in a death aura already. So they just helping to speed things along. You understand? They're helping to cut down on the, uh, on the, uh, the transients of death. The death transients, the people who just come in here and they're not here to force the life. You understand? Purposely. All this is done. Purposely. We don't want to take responsibility for anything. We don't want to take a responsibility for our own evolution. I don't worry about what goes on around me, to be honest with you. I don't worry about it. I don't worry about these natural disasters. I don't worry about... The, um, the, the, shoot, um, the shootings in the hood The best thing you can do about all that Is get together collectively with your people Because all that is supposed to do When you see the ignorance of our people When you see the ignorance of the black race And our people out here on that death vibration It's supposed to make you want to get with people Who value life And that's how you start That's how you start That's how you start the linear procession Of that immortality state That's how you start moving toward that Immortality rate because when you got enough people who want to live, who want to continue, who want to produce healthy bloodlines and healthy seeds and whatnot, and healthy children and healthy environments, then that's going to produce an immortality rate. That's uh, an, an immortal, excuse me, an immortal rate, a future immortal race of beings. That's going to produce that because all these people who want to live life and value life, these are the people who are going to become. In their bloodline, immortals, versus those people who don't value life. Because you look at the black race now, they don't value life. They don't. They have no value for life. They don't have any value for their children. The majority of our people don't have no value for their children's lives. I'm not talking about you people who have value for that. Where you say, "Oh, well, brother, you know, you 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 know, you generalize and everybody." No, I'm not generalizing any everybody. If it don't apply to you, then it's not about you. You understand? But if you are feeding any one of those low desires. In that mental state, then maybe it does apply to you. Like a person said, the hit dog hollers, that's that old uh, saying. If you feel it applies to you, then it's for you. But if it don't, then it's for the people that are living. Like I said, when I hear people say things about black people and whatnot, I don't look at I don't. I don't really care. You know, I don't really identify with it because I carry myself on a higher principle. I answer to a higher authority. I don't answer to a... Uh, uh, negative slurs and whatnot. I'm not in submission to man's negative slurs or his ideas or his philosophies about me being a black man because I'm not I'm in transmission with something else, something higher. That's real. And those people who are coming in tune with that state of trans um transmission who are coming in tell or in tune with that, these are the people who are on that stage or who are on that line of evolution to receive an immortal or eternal life because we've made it in the future. But if we don't make it here in the present, we don't start here in the present coming together collectively, then we won't make it in the future. We won't make it to become those immortal beings. So it all starts right now. It all starts right now because you're not going to see any of these so-called organizations out here that are advocating life. They're advocating death. If you're constantly focusing on things that happened in the past – what dead people, people who are no longer here, then your movements are based in death, has a death aura on it. If you're sitting up here talking about the Egyptians or the Africans or these people who have the past, like I said, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with knowing the history. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. But we're supposed to be focused on the future. We're supposed to be focused on the forward motion of a new people. 
that's what we're supposed to be for. And that's what we focus on the state of mental. We we focus on the future. We focus on the future. Yeah, we created that word. We opened ourselves up to that, use that word future. Not history, but the future. We, we interested in the futuristic. What we are growing into, what we are becoming. What we are growing out of. You understand? Constantly expanding and evolving into a higher state, into pure mental beings. Advanced things, people with higher mental capabilities, people who are starting to mature into immortals, into a God race, as it was truly meant to be. If we're not moving in that path, if we're not moving in that state, then all this is a waste of time, man. Don't come telling me nothing about Pleiades or uh, 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 the Pleiades or Sirius A or Sirius B. I don't want to hear the space talk because all this just talk. If you still out here doing the things you're doing, all that's a bunch of talk and crap. We're supposed to be coming together as a collective or a new race of people. That's what we're ultimately, ultimately supposed to be doing as an omni race or a continuous race of people, people who are truly in the line and after the order of God. If you are truly in the line and after the order of God, then you are bettering yourself. You are in transmission. You are receiving. You are evolving. You're not going to be constantly in the same rotation talking about the same culture, the same philosophy, the same lessons, the same degrees, the same uh, whatever that you was talking about 20 years ago. That's a sign of death. That's a death aura. That's a death aura. The majority of your black movements carry a death aura. They carry a, mort- a mortality rate on them. So... When that intelligence comes in from on high and certain people are going to receive it and it cuts on like a light in the people, those are the people who are going to be given the pathway to eternal life, immortal life. Their bloodline is going to open up. Their DNA is going to open up to that because it was dead. It always existed in you. It existed in your bloodline. So now the door opens to us. Whereas it won't open to many. That's why it talked about the elect or the chosen few in your book of Revelation. That was real. That's talking about an intelligent new race of people in your book of Revelation. Your elect are an intelligent chosen new race of people who come out of the black race. They are your immortals. They are your future immortal beings, your eternal ones. The ones who have crossed that line, who have received the intelligence on how to eat to live, how to eat to to um so how to eat to um uh, uh, to cut down on eating, cut out certain things, how to drink water, how to take in certain herbs, constantly starting to extend their lives again. That's the whole point of this. This is real. This is not any abstract thinking. This is not no abstract talking. This is reality. We're supposed to be in that stage of becoming true supreme beings on earth, in and after the order of God, who has already made it, who went through the trials and tribulations that we went through. This is not religion. This is not spirituality. This is higher intelligence. I said before, God is an intelligent, bright man who walked the earth as a black man. Through tri- so- as a so-called black man, through trials and tribulations, and evolve into where he is today. And we got to walk the same path to get out of here, to move forward, to evolve, to advance. This is a mental evolution. But for our people who don't think that's real, that mental evolutions and physical evolutions are taking place, that's the people who are mentally dead. Stay away from them because that means there's no change in their life, and they're not looking for no change to occur, and they're not opening themselves up to change because they're dead. Anything that doesn't change is dead. Anything that doesn't change is dead. But the things that transform, the things that transfigure, the things that change and evolve and, you know, new things come out, that's life there. That's life. I said when you go to a planet and you see water on the planet, that's a sign of mortal life, physical mortal life. That something was started in that water and that something will end in that water. But when you get into the true light, the sun, the solar light, the solar energy, that which lights the darkness of the, lights the darkness of space in the universe, that is 
a sign of immortal life because that light will always be present. Don't listen to them telling you that light will burn. That light will never burn out. It will always continue. That is a sign of immortal life. That is a sign of us, those who are in tune. This is real. So I'm going to answer these last questions because we've come to the end of our broadcast. I want to thank the people who called in tonight. Right? December 16th, I mean, uh, December uh, 16th. Sunday, September, um, this, Sunday, December 16th, Superman, State of Mentel, Superman, Superwomen um, Project, 1368 Fulton Street at Restoration Plaza on the first floor. Starts at 3 p.m., ends at 7 p.m. For information or more information on the project, uh, give us a call at 347-465-3602 or 718-510-3769. Three starts at 3 p.m., ends at 7 p.m. I'll be talking, answering questions, and talking about the state of mental, what it is as usual, and the mentalist code of conduct. So this will be taking place. Let me answer these questions before I get out of here. Let me see. Hmm. Let me see. Okay. Any questions, comments? things let give me a call right now because we're in the last 12 minutes of this broadcast i don't want any questions anything uh toward the end because i want to play out the music tonight and you know uh do what it is we do hold on a second hold on a second uh okay give me a second let me make sure i answer all of these questions Who are the real immortals? The real immortals are your intelligent beings, your omni-beings or your almond beings or who you refer to as God, the ones who created your mortal beings. They are the ones who have no beginning and no ending. And we are the natural manifestations. Some of our people are the natural manifestations of the bloodline um, descendants of these immortal God beings on earth. So it is in our DNA to evolve into these immortal beings on earth. That's there. That's a reality. Right? That's who your immortals are. They are your advanced beings, your omni, your continuous beings, the ones who have no beginning, no ending, no life, no death. That's who we are descended from. This is who we come from, and we should be moving in that direction. All right? Are the immortals gods? Yes, they are gods or supreme beings because they have mastered the higher intelligence of themselves and of the future world. They had to work or open themselves up to go from being amongst mortal beings or dead beings to immortal beings. And we will have to make that journey as well. Right? We will have to make that journey as well going from mortal uh, um being mortal beings or dead beings or mentally dead beings to immortal beings to becoming uh immortal mentally and physically meaning continuous never ending All right so they became a supreme race of people are the extraterrestrials gods now well, yeah yeah who you call extraterrestrials or um omni beings on earth who can, who carry that bloodline connection to God, that omni race, they are your gods on earth. They are your extraterrestrials because what makes them extraterrestrials people who are having extra cap- are people who have extra capabilities on the terrain. And that first extra capability is to think on a higher level to receive higher intelligence. That's what makes them extraterrestrials. That's what separates them from regular terrestrials or regular people who are on the earth's terrain. All right? That's what separates them. All right? They have that extra capability, and they are um, connected to that state of logic and intelligence, which is connected directly to God, not from man. Right? Uh, what is the difference between mortals and immortals? Mortals were born here on earth. They were created here on earth. Just as they were created here on earth, they will die here on earth. They were born to die. They were created to die. Right, immortals were never born, nor will they ever die because they were not created on Earth. They, they, matter of fact, they weren't created at all. They were always in existence as that light force. Right, 
They were always in existence as a light force, constantly moving through the darkness. And that light always exists in the darkness as pure energy, right? Wherever that pure energy or that pure light is that's constantly expanding the darkness of space or the universe is, that is where immortal or eternal life exists. They are your high intelligent beings, and they resonate as high vibrational light or frequency. They resonate as high frequency beings, high density beings, highly defined beings, physical beings on a higher level. So when I tell a brother Reginald, I say, yeah, we will always be in a physical form, but we will be in a highly defined state or physical form. All right? Okay. Uh can mortals become immortals? No. No. Mortals cannot become immortals. You have to have it in your DNA, locked in your DNA to be of the immortal bloodline. People who have a mindset where they're not trying to change or not open to change, they are by nature mortals. They have no reason to return to the earth. They have no reason to continue life past that time frame that they were allotted. So, no, mortals, people who have a time frame to be born, figure they come here to do nothing but eat, sleep, and crap, and have sex, and do all the trivial things in this society, they have no purpose to um, to, to exist past their time frame. So, no, mortals cannot become immortals. If you are going to that, from that state of, uh, 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 if you are become, becoming immortal, then chances are you will always, or not even chances, there is the fact that you were already, you had that more, mortal Immortal, excuse me, immortal uh, bloodline and DNA going through you with those capabilities to open your mind to, to receive that intelligence. So that's already encoded in your DNA to go from being those who are, were amongst the mortals, you know, to immortal. You know, you carry that DNA in you that was immortal. So once you hit that stage of uh, rest or what you call death, you're actually switching out for a different form or a different uh, body or a different shell. You have certain people who are not going to switch out for a different shell because they have no reason to continue beyond their time frame, as I said. All right. mm. Are there a race of, um, what is that? Are there a race of potential immortals walking the earth in this day and time, and will they receive immortal life? Uh, in the future Yeah That's what the whole story of the book of Revelation is about When it's talking about the elect Meaning the elected or the electrified ones The ones who will receive light Will receive connection Will receive flowing current of intelligence Right That will ignite them On a three dimensional state That's why you see the word electric, electricity Electri city Elect chosen tri Three, city means um, state or dimension. That's why they're going to receive that light in that electrical state or that electri city, meaning that um, that chosen state of three dimensions. You understand? They're going to receive that intelligence in that chosen state of three dimensions, right, as those chosen people. They will be chosen to receive intelligence in those three-dimensional states, and they will move to the fourth, and they will become they will be uh, uh they will start in that electricity, the electricity state of four. They will go from electrical beings or electricity beings to electricity beings, where they will receive intelligence, be a frequency and higher intelligence and advanced thought from a fourth dimensional state, and they will keep climbing as they keep climbing in dimensions. As they keep climbing in dimensions, they will receive higher intelligence. And they will start on that journey to becoming immortals. It will unlock certain capabilities in them. All right. So that is it. We've reached the end of our broadcast. Where are we? Hmm. Unlock my soul. Oh, I got three minutes left. Uh, join me Friday uh, on State of Mintel Radio. We we will have a hot topic as usual. Uh, I want to close out with some music. Uh, December sixteenth, uh, Superman Superwoman Project thirteen six thirteen. Uh, 
1368 Fulton Street, Red Star Restoration Plaza. All right. I am the intellectual Newton Mincare. This has been State of Mintel Radio. Good night. See you Friday night at 9.